आई एस टी वी प्रेजेंस इन एसोसिएशन विद धनमंजूरी कम्युनिटी कॉलेज दी एम यूनिवर्सिटी इम्फा लॉन्सिंग सीरीज ऑफ एजुकेशनल प्रोग्राम रिकॉर्डेड ऑनलाइन क्लासेस फॉर अंडर ग्रेजुएट एंड पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट्स बाय टीचर्स फ्रॉम वेरियस कॉलेज एंड यूनिवर्सिटीज ड्यूरिंग दिस कोविड नाइन्टीन लॉकडाउन एवरी डे ऑन आई एस टी वी नॉन्ग इन एट पी एम फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी फोर्थ मे टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी ऑन वॉस वॉट्स फोर्टेट only on ihtv nongin now when we come to gamares when this is visual light when we come to gamares let us see when we come to gamares and the energy how much is the gamare energy is we find that it is 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power 10 12 more than that of the visible light so gamma rays energy low energy gamma ray energy gamma rays when you have to very high energy high energy gamma rays low energy gamma rays which we are of interest in this mosber effect is of the order of few few k e kilo electron volt then very high energy hundreds and thousands of mev millions so very high energy that is 10 to the power 6 10 to the power 9 extra electron volt see millions and billions of electron volt or gv this is million this is what you call 10 to power 9 is gv so when i say gv giga electron volt 10 to power 9 electron volt these are energies which we talk about in the nuclear physics or in the when we come to the nucleus now after this let us see why the absorption of resonance absorption of gamma rays is very difficult in practical we have seen as 1904 r w wood observed experiments of resonance fluorescence in visible light he saw it so it is not difficult for visible light what are the factors which lead to the absorption of the visible light number 1 is the we have na the natural weight by uncertainty relation we have delta e delta t is of the order of i squared i squared means i s by to i s by the value of this is approximately 6.58 yes the value of this is nearly equal to 6. 6 to 10 to the power minus 34. 6.64. This is approximately equal to 6.64 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule dot second. Ha! Huh. Very small. Fantastically small. See. So we are talking about, you know, very small. This is uncertainty relation, energy, time, uncertainty. when an atom which is in excited state is has got certain lifetime so since it has got certain lifetime delta t we do not know the exact energy it means there will be distribution of energy so this is called natural broadening natural means natural broadening means that light when an atom emits the light it will have certain distribution suppose i say like this and another may say like this another may say 
like this. Hmm. Here is hardly any burdening. Light is very sharp. Laser lights are very much monochromatic, and it is, you know, distribution of energy is very small. This is this is very broad. Now natural burdening, it is the limit of that when photon or when comes from excited to ground state, there will be a burdening or distribution of that frequency of light about a center. And it is given by this natural delta E, delta T. So if we put the lifetime of the excited state, for example, if I have got this we call it gamma, the line width, line width. Yeah, what you have seen is the mean is here, the wavelength are distributed to, and the width of this is gamma. And this gamma, we have this gamma or delta t, delta t is equal to gamma, uh, this tau, tau equal to, yes, E. So delta E, which is, we call it line width gamma is equal to, now we have ice cut divided by tau. So ice cut is, this one can convert to electron ball, okay? So if I convert this, ice cut to electron pole. One electron ball I have already mentioned is 1.6 into 10 to the power, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. Okay, in Joule. This is 19. So if we substitute this ice cut, 6.64 into 10 to the power minus 34, Joule dot second, then, do not check it. What we have is in this ice cut, delta tau times second will go, and we convert this joule into electron volt. One electron volt equal to 1.6 to the minus 19 joule. So we are able to know the width, the energy distributions of the photon emitted by another which we have, even in the atomic chaos, which we have seen very easily to have the producing resonance in atomic light, atomic cases, like atomic absorption spectrophotometer, then spectrophotometer and other cases. There should not be any producing resonance until, uh, if the nature was not kind enough. One is natural burdening will we have. Another is, which we have is Doppler burdening. Doppler. D O double P L E R Doppler burdening. D E N I N G. Means number one. Number two. With these two, we are able to see very easily the absorption or resonance fluorescence in atomic gas. What is this Doppler burning? When an atom, suppose if you take sodium or any atom, they are in the gaseous system or in any mess. They are at random motion. They are at random motion. When in the random motion, sometimes this Photon is emitted like this, sometimes photon is emitted when it back. Therefore, the above the natural burdening, there is Doppler burning. And the Doppler burdening is given by this relation. We have Doppler burdening D is equal to twice KB T R, R or E R. E R. No, th this should be half. Yes. Means no problem. Depends on temperature. K B is Boltzmann constant. K 
And ER is recoil. When the atom emits a photon, what is the recoil? It means the due to Doppler burdening, we will see the line of the emitter is further broader. It means, suppose, this is the natural burdening. And if we have natural burdening due to the uncertainty relation, which you cannot compress it. Suppose this is the natural burdening. Suppose this is natural burdening, gamma. Then Doppler burdening is, this is Doppler burdening, Doppler. It means it is past border. It means when you have in the emission, in the absorption, due to this Doppler burdening, where there is overlap. The recoil of the emitted photon, photon and absorbed photon, they are separated by twice R. Now, due to Doppler burdening, there is overlapping. This leads to the resonance absorption of the visible light very easily in atomic absorption and other spectrophotometer. Now let us come to the gamma rays. We have seen that due to the natural burdening and Doppler burdening, there is overlap of the light emitted in the visible region. This is why it is not so difficult to have the resonance absorption in the visible region. When we come to the Gamma rays. For example, the most used gamma rays for the Mosbury effect is iron 57 gamma rays, which emits 14.4 keV, 14.4 keV gamma rays. And compared to sodium, we have sodium, it is only 2.1 electron volt. It means it is about 10 to the power four times, nearly four times more than the uh, visible light, this gamma ray. The natural width is almost the same. Half-life of the excited state is almost the same. If we look to the recoil energy, recoil energy due to the emission of yellow light by sodium atom, it is very small, 10 to the power minus 10 electron volt. Whereas, recoil energy, when this iron 57 or cobalt 57 nucleus emits a gamma ray of 14.4 keV is, let us see, it is nearly 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 electron, very large. It is about 8 times, 7, 8 times recoil more than that of the visible light. But, if we see the formula for recoil energy, it is E gamma I square. Square means 10 to the power pi means 10 to the power 10. So recoil energy of the gamma rays will be much, much larger than that of the atomic gas. Cross section, precision of tuning. Yes, here is very important. Precision in tuning. What is precision of tuning? Precision of tuning is, you know, when we tune a radio or when we tune something, radio or any mechanical or electronic, the input, the frequency, impressed frequency, and the natural frequency of that should be measured. How far you can deviate it. So precision of tuning, which is line weight divided by energy of the photon, gamma rays. And if we see the atomic case, it is about 2 into 10 to the power minus 8. You have to know two parts. You have to tune in the atomic case also in the 10 to the power 8. Means if you have frequency, you cannot change. You have to, you cannot deviate in the 10 to the power 5, 6. It should not, it may deviate in the last few terms only. But in case of gamma rays, 3 into 10 to the power minus 13. It means for gamma rays, your tuning is so precise that the accuracy must be one, 3 parts into 10 to the power 13. This is why it is very difficult to see resonance absorption in gamma rays. And what happened by Mosbach? 
1954. Let us see this. This is Mosvar effect for the cobalt 57 electron capture. And in electron capture, it gives transition. One is gamma ray 14.4, another is 136 keV line. And 14.4 keV is most used gamma rays for the Mosvar effect. What Mosvar did was, we know that, we know in the Doppler effect in sound, we know Doppler effect in light. Now, Doppler effect is a change of frequency. When the observer or the source is moving towards or moving away, or one is moving to the another with respect. So when the source moves towards the observer, frequency increases. When the source moves away from the observer, frequency decreases. So what Mosbert did was, he thought that since to remove the recoil, for example, in a gun, you have to have very heavy waves. So the recoil hardly takes place. So he thought that iridium-129 kV gamma rays emitted by iridium-191. Yes, it emits gamma rays of 125. He says that that gamma ray will not have natural, only natural broadening, no Doppler broadening. So he moved that gamma rays. So what he did, his experiment was change in the energy of the gamma ray when you move. Yes, delta E gamma. Means change in the energy of gamma ray. When you move that source, this is equal to plus minus, yes, B by C E gamma. You see, means when you move a source, a photon, or gamma rays, very small amount, there is fantastically small change in the frequency, change in the energy. And that change is only about 10 to the power minus 12, 13 electron volt only. Such a small fantastically change. So he said, that, yes, we will be able to see resonance absorption of gamma rays in iridium. He did experiment. In Barbius 1959, and for this he was awarded Nobel Prize. This is the first time that man is able to see resonance fluorescence of gamma ray having natural width. It also possible if you move very fast to compensate the recoil, there is not much physics is involved. So this led to a tremendous development in the study of high precision isomership quadruple splitting, and magnetic hyperpile splitting, which was not possible to observe before the impact of Mosvar effect. And another is about the gravitational redshift. It means if you move your light only a few meters above this, the frequency of the light changes. And practical demonstration was possible using Mosvar effect, which I will come. <laughs>